So hello, good morning, everyone and everybody. Um, here, very happy to be here, actually, this uh, interesting event, and thankful for the organizers of this uh, dev room. My name is Guilherme, and I'm representing here the Quax, Quite Universal Cir Circuit Simulator, and I will give you an overview where the project's coming from, what we are doing now, and where we hope to be in a couple of years. So the project was created in 2003 by two German engineers in TU Berlin. They left the project about four years ago, but then in this period that they were active up to today, we have roughly 20 contributors. The main interface was translated to 20 languages. It's cross-platform, so it's mainly developed in Linux and Mac. However, we have a big slice of users on the Windows. To give you an idea, on the last release that we did, in the last six months, we got 43,000 downloads from the binary package on SourceForge. And if you look at the download history on SourceForge for the, the, the project history, it's kind of steadily increasing. Roughly, on when they left, there is a drop, and then it picked up two years ago again. And our main users are school kids, actually, learning circuits. But we also have research done on this package. We have, we have uh, hobbies like RF people and guys developing RF circuits. And we also have professionals doing things like signal integrity and using the advanced features that we have on, the, on this package. So what, what consists the, wh what we have inside there? So it's basically a schematic capture. We have our own simulator, it's called Quax Atom. We have other packages uh, one that early joined early on the, the flow was ASCO, which is a circuit optimizer. Then we have some simple hookups for Icarus Verilog and FreeHDL. It has built-in data visualization, has an equation system for pre-processing and post-processing on the schematic. We have a nice component library, and we also have tools for design and synthesis. It's extensible because we can import spice, some flavors and some construct, not everything. We have an ongoing development for increased Verilog A capabilities, and it also has some mostly post-processing and an experimental feature for doing the transient solution with Octas and MATLAB. Basically, it's a C++ project. We use Qt for the user interface. We are still struggling with Q Qt3 support on the graphics. We are porting now for Qt4. You can build it with traditional auto tools or CMake. We uh, use GPair for, for hashing, Flex and Bison for parser and, and vector. We also make heavy use of ADMS. We're going to see later also that's uh, related to the very, very log A conversion of models. And most of the documentation at this moment is, is written in LaTeX or PDFs uh, in the end. Uh, where can you find us? So we have the website. At the moment we have roughly 10 people actively working. The last month, perhaps five people committed to the, to the code base, but it's, 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 it's getting more and more people. We have sort of extensive documentation. We have uh, online help. We have uh, these workbooks. It's roughly 20, 200 pages each with tutorials, reports on how the things were implemented, and, so, and also a technical manual with not really related to the implementation, but more like uh, textbook-like instructions. We had originally source, source, source Forge. Then we migrated to the Git repository. We still use the tracker in there, the form and the mailing lists, but we are moving heavily to GitHub. Uh, we, we are activating there the issue tracker, the wiki. We also have uh, continuous integration with Travis, building on Linux for GCC and Clang, and for OSX also. We are doing coverage on the simulator. Uh, right now we have 40% coverage that we are trying to automate the testing so we don't break stuff as we develop. And yeah, and again, the tools. For graphical tools, we have the main schematic capture, which is called Quax. There is a recent addition that's used for creating active filters, like uh, audio amplifiers and things like this. There is a small tool for creating attenuators. There is a simple edit test editor, a tool for passive filters, the help I told you, a simple dialog for matching networks, a library of components. There is the simple one, REST codes for calculating resistor colors and the value, the commercial value, it's a simple one, but it's, it's nice. 
and there is a transcalc that's for uh, transmission line calculation. In total, we have roughly yeah, 180 uh, primitives, components that you can use for yeah, this, this simulation that I'm going to show later on. And for command line tools, we have the main interface has a beginning of a uh, command line interface that you can convert schematics to, to netlists. You can export a uh, printout of the schematics uh, from the command line. Then you have the simulator and the converter that converts back and forth between different uh, netlists and, 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 and data formats that we use. And as I mentioned, we, have, we rely on other packages like the optimizer, the Verilog A translator, iVerilog, FreeHDL for uh, VHDL, then Spice to Spice, Octave, and we are increasing, I am at least increasingly using more Python. So, I got this is like that for backup. I will try to make it live so it gets more. If you have questions, please stop me and we can, I can try to answer your questions. So, so this is, yeah, this is the main interface. Here we have project manager. You have the contents of each project. You have the components like lumps, sources, transmission lines for RF people. And uh, we have this very long A devices. And you can drop in diagrams. And we also have libraries of where the primitive components people took from the data sheet, the parameters and put in there so it's easier to use. And yeah. The sub tools we have here, for instance, the test text editor that ca can be inside or in outside of the tool. The filter synthesis, which is launching on the background. You can calculate and you can paste it here. And what else? Just for the live calculation. Then you have the component library that can be also outside. So you have here the list of components. Um, what I skip something. So this is for transmission line calculations. You have a handful of transmission lines that you can put the parameters, you can synthesize, and then you can, yeah, this is a simple one. But you could have also like clock shell, synthesize, and so on. Uh, what was this? So you have a simple passive attenuator networks also that you can give the input and output impedances and, and, and so on. And you calculate and yeah, it should, you got the idea. What else do we have here? So then this is the resistor, it's, uh, I think it's not working now. So it is, so basically put forty five and then creates the 40, 47 for you. I can put the following here, it's, it's nice for, for students. And okay, <coughs> this is more or less the interface. Then I will show you some examples. This is, here is the schematic. So this is a simple one, it's a RLC. The R is given as a parameter from an equation. So it's a free process value. These equations can be quite complicated. And if you simulate, so it's simulated it gives you some report, and here is the response. However, you can also do like this. You can de deactivate that, activate that, and then we are now sweeping the R value in five steps, and there you go. So it's nice that you can kind of interact and, and play a bit with the circuit. And yeah, this is the first one. And let's move for a second. This is a quite nice, model for a 555IC. What's different here is that it's not a SPICE. It's actually a macro model. It's sort of a system level simulation. So Mike Brinson did it quite a while ago. You can pop in and you can see the box, sort of macro modeling technique. Then you can go inside and you can go outside. And you can see that you can, we have also some, some, some support for digital components like an R gate, then you can make interesting experimentation with that. And then you can simulate. So it's a transient simulation. 
and this is the response. So it starts up, then you have the internal signals, and this is the output, the clock that's generated from the 555. So you can have, as I showed before, <coughs> the graphics together with the schematic, like here, oops, like here, and or you can choose to put it aside and document it nicely and, and tidy. Um, this is an example with the optimizer. So let's say I went for the textbook, I got equations for this bandpass filter, I did the work calculation, okay, it looks okay, but maybe I want to see if I can improve based on equations, like I want to, max to minimize the side lobes, reduce the ripple on the pass stand, so you can create an optimization box based on these equations and the optimizer is going to calculate for us the best parameters given the constraints that you gave. So it's now simulated, it's, it's, it's using ASCO in the background, it has a generic, uh, <coughs> genetic algorithm for finding yeah, the best parameters on, his, on these metrics. So it's running and it's done. And then this is the final circuit and then you can find back the, the final parameters inside of the simulation box. Um, Quax was initially developed as a RF simulation tool. So there is a strong background on, on, on frequency domain simulations. This is, for instance, a five-stage uh, microstrip filter. It used coupled microstrips. In this case, it's quite tiny microstrips, like uh, 400 micrometers wide, five millimeters long, and half a millimeter separation. And then this person, it was a previous contributor, developed this this filter, then you can have a substrate, and yeah, kind of uh, interesting, again, the equation, and it simulates, so let's see, uh, I can plot here the, uh, the snake shark, the monkey here, okay, it's a bit coarse, then you can increase the data points here, this is a sense of, it's quite fast, then there you go, it's a bit nicer now. And yeah, there is plenty of other transmission lines here that you can play with. And okay. Okay, these are where, where my, so to say, basic examples. Let's fast, for, fast forward here. I forgot the XP5 filter. Uh, tools, which is not in this version, it's for the next version, so I will show you later. And my backup slides, just recap. This is a new filter actually for the next version. There is, is, is more, more things. So this, okay, these were about the common lines that I forgot to mention. The simulator can do DC, transient, AC, AC with noise, S parameters, S parameters with noise. And the harmonic balance, it's, uh, it works, but it has some, some, some issues. We are working on that. It, Quax uses a, a different netlist, it's a, their own netlist, our own netlist. Uh, our own data file, and there is this converter that we use to to move from Spice to Quax and to create libraries from Spice components. Then there is other exports from our data to CSV. It can read and can deal with Pouchstone, for instance, for for S parameters. You can pick up from the machine and, and plug in there to to simulate. And okay, these were the five. Ex oh, I forgot the Verilog example. So I gave you these four examples, and. Oops, we have also, uh, oh, it's a simple one, but anyway. So it's basically a, a test bench for a Verilog uh, counter. So this is the Verilog component. It helps you to create a symbol. And basically it's a counter, maybe let's put four bits here. Then you take, then you pop out, and then you simulate and it kicks up, and it's very slow. So it's, it's co invoke, it called, uh, Icarus in the background, and here you have the counter, one, two, three, and wrap around. Okay, this is a simple example, but it's uh, it's nice to have for students mainly, and perhaps in the future you can, you can think of having analog and, and digital simulator plus simulation, which is, it's quite nice. So back to my slides. And now I'm, go I'm going to show you some two features that are in development, which is the Verilog A model builder and the ng-spice or Zeiss front end. 
feature that we just fast forward. So why, why is Verilog A important for us? Because we have several models that are written in Verilog A. We have at the moment 53 models, and many of the industry standard models, compact models for, uh, for semiconductors or transistors, they, they are based on these models, and many of them are written in Verilog A. Uh, Vladex will speak ab about this later also. And we have to translate Verilog A into our C++ code. We use this tool, which is ADMS, which it's basically a code-to-code -code translator. It has, we, we give the Verilog A, we give a set of trans transformations, and it spits out code. I say code because it can be anything, even documentation, text. It's a quite interesting tool. The limitations is that at the moment we have just a subset of the Verilog A standard, Verilog AMS standard, and Quax at the moment has no support for, for this kind of voltage or, or nodal contributions. It's just a flow of current contributions. Anyway, uh, let me close this one. I'll go for the development mode. Uh, yes. So this is a version that has uh, a more advanced uh, feature related to the Verilog A. So for instance, this is the BSIM-6. I think we are the first open source project that has support, some support for this. It's about 4,000 lines of Verilog A code, and you can, if you want to have a look at it. And basically how it works, we can, we can create a symbol for the model, so it extracts that. When you save it, it parses the parameters and stores the parameters on, on the component for you. Then we can, Okay, you can have to build it. So now it's kicking off ADMS and the CC compiler on the back, C++ compiler in the background, so it's repeating. So these 4,000 lines of Verilog A yields some 40,000 lines of C++. Here is the report of the Verilog A compiler, and here is the C++ compiler with some warnings. But the model is built as a, a shared library, and it's loaded on the, on the core server during simulation. So this is done. And what I'm going to simulate now is a chain of, in okay, I have to load the component because they're dynamic. And okay, I also have to load here the, the model card, which is the parameters from the manufacturer, so to say. So we don't have yet the include option on the car, so we have to do it manually. But now it's, so to say, configured. Then we can now load. So it's this inverter that we are going to simulate. Actually, it's a chain of inverters. It's a five, five stage inverters. And I'm just increase a bit the runtime so you, you, you see that I'm not cheating here. And it's kind of slowish, but it works. And it works quite well because the results are matching the edge spy simulator, where on which is the simulator that the people from Berkeley that developed the, the model used to sign off the, the model. So we are quite happy. There you go. So it's you have this sinusoidal input, and then it becomes a rectangular pulse. And okay, that's great for for the Verilog A. So it's quite quite interesting. I think we are the, the only tool that has this sort of interactive interactive way of building Verilog A and loading Verilog A uh, compact models. And okay, let's close this, and then I will switch to the. NG Spice and Zeiss. So this is uh, because we have some limitation on the transient solver of, of Quax, and we have high quality open source uh, simulator engines out there. And then this this fellow from from Russia, Vadim, it's it's making it work in a way that we translate the Quax netlist to this targeting these specific simulators, and this is more or less how it looks at the moment. Um, so we have here this audio amplifier, which doesn't work with the current Quax. And we are running an AC simulation and transient simulation. We are putting one voltage input, and let's see what we get on the output. Then we have here simulate with SPICE at the moment. We can run NG SPICE first. And that's it. Cool. And then we can run Zeiss. Serial. I don't really have the serial. This is a Sandia, Sandia Labs uh, solver. It's if you happen if you happen to have a cluster, for instance, you can run uh, MPI with this thing. So it's quite powerful, heavy guns here. So let's run and run. Great. 
then let's go for the result. Uh, yeah, this guy. All right. On top we have the AC response. So we, we put one volt, and we are getting what? Um, yeah, roughly 13 gain on this amplifier. It's quite flat between the 20, 20 k hertz. It's quite nice. Uh, here is again the transient response. Nice. And spice and and size are in agreement. And hopefully we can bring quarks in agreement with those simulators as well. So this was it for for the the, the demo. So let's switch back a bit for the back to the project again. This is the current status. So on the graphical interface, we are struggling a bit to finalize this port and go entirely on QT4. And it's difficult because we have basically to redo the graphics. It's 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 going to work, but it's going to take time because we're a small team. We are doing at the same time quite a lot of refactoring, bug fixing, and small improvements that don't break the tool. And yeah, and we are doing also some refactoring and porting some custom code to the C++, C++11 library. We are porting our LaTeX documentation to a Sphinx based documentation to, ha to, to ease the contribution on this side. We are also push, um, starting to push uh, a translation platform for, for the Quark's GUI and the doc doc documentation. And these developments that are more prominent now, there's also this last one that's quite new. It's, uh, it's a new tool for modeling devices from Berkeley that it's based on Octave or MATLAB and we can, we can use that uh, with Quark. And the roadmap is it's actually bigger than that, but it's the just a few highlights that at least me, I would like to see happening. So we have already a simple GUI and a simulator, and we are doing refactoring and yeah, moving forward with the, to make it better, hopefully. But we still lack some powerful design analysis tools, like uh, nice algorithms. I would like to have an API, perhaps interface with Python or Octave, uh, in both levels, the simulator and the user interface. The harmonic balance works, but it needs a bit of addition. Uh, there are other simulations. I was also in contact with the, um, creators of Open EMS and NEC 2++ to see if we can get some sort of uh, electromagnetic simulation tied to our, tied to the, work, the workflow the same way we did with uh, ASCO and, and uh, Verilog and VHDL. We are working on bring more compatibility with SPICE flavors like uh, Spectre and other com commercial simulators. This is a big thing for me at least, I would like to see co-simulation. Maybe I can talk with the very login VHDL guys to see if we can set up a VTI or, 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 or other sort of uh, interface there for, for achieving that. Uh, we need some more yeah, compact storage and faster storage, like H5. Uh, we have, there are other standards of models out there that we'd like to offer. And ultimately we'd like to have a smooth way to, to, to produce what we simulate and design. So perhaps a tighter integration with a PCB or a layout uh, uh, tools out there, maybe KeyCAD or KeyLayout. Um, more on the technical side, um, have some more advanced Monte Carlo based on technology files to give a further, further push to the quality of the simulation. And ultimately lab, lab automation or to, to fetch data from equipment do some optimization and, and things like this. So these are the, I'll just leave for, for background, I can show you them ahead of time. Yeah. Quickly the page, so this is the page. It's simple, we are still working on it. You can find documentation here for instance. These are the tutorials I mentioned, the 555 is here. There's a workbook, there is also a Russian translation of the workbook, some reports and some other reports. And then there is also the technical manual here. This is our organization on, on GitHub where we store our stuff. We also have, uh, I think the most up-to-date version of the Verilog A converter is our version, which is released. Actually, I released that version as being the, the latest one on, on, on SolidForge. Our issue tracker, okay, this is fixed actually, yesterday. Anyway, uh, this is uh, the page, the original page on SourceForge. We get roughly 3,000 downloads every week, it's cool. And we have a forum in here where we answer questions to people, yeah, the students mainly. And this is the new documentation that we're pushing forward. So we have based on the Sphinx and it's online. 
and it's uh, multilingual German. Wow, that's the digital shifter. And then it's based on, on, on TransFX, which is uh, tightly integrated with GitHub, where we can push and pull translations oops, from there. And this is, is crowd sourced, so it's volunteers that are translating the tool for us. And, this. and, and I think that's it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's flexible. It's quite powerful for what it is for this 10 years or so the development with very few people. It's quite, quite nice. It's useful for beginners and, and professional user li users alike. And we are hoping to contribute more with other projects in order to make it even better. So the roadmap is quite bold, but we hope to get there someday, maybe with your help. And yeah, we are open to, to your help. And if you, if you feel like it, join us on this journey. Thank you. Tech bed. Yeah. The tech bed. And uh, how to support it? Is there any support for the game developers? Okay, sorry. The, the question was if the netlist is a text based. Yes, it's a simple text based. It's rather simple, actually. It's much simpler than Spice, for instance. Is Pardon? Uh, is it based or just general flat text? Or it's flat text. Flat text. It's, so no it's actually, you have to give all the parameters also. It's like full, full descriptive in there. Yeah. No, none. It's roadmap. Yeah. yeah, the question was Monte Carlo. It's, it's just roadmap. <laughs> sure. Uh, the model cars you mentioned for the technology. Yeah. Uh, is it your format or is it used to some format? So the model card for the compact models usually is just a list of parameters. It's quite easy to to check, but it's usually based on spice. So it's just a plus sign, the name of the parameter and the value, that overrides the primitive. That's basically how it works. So we don't, usually simulators have include, then you include this file and everything works, but we don't have that on the simulator, so we are doing that on the GUI at the moment. So we have to create a new netlist entry, parse it, and process it in order to, to streamline the flow. So it has a quite, uh, so the question is if there are support for equations on, on processing the, the results. So let me switch back to English here so it makes my life easier. It has some pre-process and post-process, but not on the loop. That's not implemented. So you can get, uh, where is it? Uh, mathematical functions. So all these functions you can drop in into the schematic and you can you can use to do stuff with either before the simulation runs or after the simulation runs. So yes, I think you can calculate the power. If you, you choose the right nodes and you write the right equations, it should give you the power, yeah. So it's quite, quite extensive actually. Yeah, so you see there is also our F and stuff here. The question is whether we can do basic simulations, and the answer is yes. We have we have a library of digital components that it's it's okayish. You can you can kind of hand wire and, and do this. Yeah, for a small circuit, it's, it's quite okay. Yeah, otherwise I would recommend to go to Verilog or other more powerful. <laughs> but for small circuits and for for studying and and in teaching, it's it's quite it's quite nice. Yeah. And you have you can visualize the, 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 the diagrams at the same time, so it's quite quite handy. Yeah.
it's okay. The the question is how does this, this the front end talks to the back end? So the front end has its own schematic format, and then when you call the simulator, it spits out a netlist and calls the simulator. So it's separated. It's two. It's no, there is no back annotation at the moment. We just pick out. So it, 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 the, uh, sorry, the question is <laughs> how we get the data back from the simulator. We tell the simulator to write a file, we read the file, and then we plot it. Okay, thank you.